Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we've got big changes on the way as another active week looks to take shape next week with multiple days of severe weather and much colder conditions filtering in for some and even some heavy snow. So we're going to be breaking things down for you in this update over the next uh, seven to 10 days. So let's walk you through the details here. Let's take a look at the overall water vapor imagery for this morning for your Thursday, uh, April the 7th timeframe. And you can see this huge swirl in the midsection of the country here. That's actually got some very cold air aloft and it's bringing down some snow showers uh, in its wake, but also some very high winds as well. And you can see it from the water vapor imagery with all the dry air filtering on the backside. We dealt with all that severe weather this week in parts of Texas and across the southeast. Now it's extended off the east coast. So they're going to be under the gun today in parts of Virginia and North, Car North Carolina. But even into Florida is going to be getting the action. In fact, you've already had several tornado warnings down here in parts of central Florida. So definitely be on high alert as we get into the afternoon hours, into the evening hours. And you can actually pinpoint that from the overall setup with that swirl dragging down those very high winds on the hazard at outlook we've got numerous uh high wind warnings in parts of the dakotas into nebraska going into kansas and even red flag warnings where it's been bone dry in parts of west texas western oklahoma and western kansas but those wind advisories extend all the way down to the coastline as far south into Louisiana with those windier conditions as that as that big huge swirl drags down that those high winds and has some colder air aloft where it is going to be dumping some snow into portions of Minnesota where they do have some winter weather advisories currently right now but there's the severe outlook for today as the storm prediction center has that slight risk for severe weather and including an isolated threat for tornadoes and we've already had those several tornado warnings in central florida this morning and that's why they have that five percent elevated risk for some tornadic activity in the parts of central florida but also there's an area too that we have to be concerned about in parts of the carolinas getting into virginia but yes, we could be looking at some stronger and some severe storms as we get into the late afternoon hours into the evening hours along the East Coast extending into uh, Florida. But take a look at the overall big picture for the rest of the country. And here's the graph at the bottom left hand corner of the screen, essentially depicting from rain all the way down to the critical fire risk. So let's start off into the, uh, the Pacific Northwest where we do have some, sp some sporadic rain showers gonna be entering the picture, but also that fire concern with that red flag warning today, this whole area has just been bone dry, essentially west of the Dallas Worth area into West Texas, into the panhandle of Texas, Western Oklahoma, Western Kansas, where we do have that critical fire weather possible uh, where the, uh, the the humidity value is going to be dropping into the teens later on this afternoon, and that, with along with the windy conditions, sets the stage for fires to easily develop. And then once they do develop with that wind, they could spread rapidly, quickly. But out ahead of it, they've got those snows going to be breaking out into the Dakotas into Minnesota today with those winter weather advisories in place. And you can't roll out with that colder air aloft and some of this could be some mixed precipitation. We're not talking about much. We're talking about some few wet snowflakes in this part of the area. But there's the severe threat along the East Coast. And we could even have some freezing rain possible in portions of uh, Maine and up, uh, upper portions of Vermont and New Hampshire uh, later on this afternoon as that colder air continues to drag down from, from the north. And that, I think that just continues as we get into that Friday timeframe, April the 8th. Those, those uh, wet snowflakes extend a little bit further into Idaho, into Montana, where we do have some of that critical fire danger still continuing into parts of the Texas Panhandle and parts of uh, Kansas and Nebraska, where we still have that colder air aloft out ahead of that cold front, dragging down that cold air and those colder conditions can't roll out some of those 
uh, you know, isolated sporadic snow showers uh, in its wake, but it should be just all rain as we get into parts of Atlanta, into the Carolinas, along the East Coast, along the I-95 corridor. These shouldn't be severe by then. These should be just some heavier rain and some strong storms and some isolated cells along the I-95 corridor. Well, let's take a look at the temperatures on Friday morning. You can see it's some pretty cold air into parts of uh, Canada and to parts of the Dakotas. And that colder temperatures, as it drags down that cold air from the north, we got widespread 30s in Kansas and Oklahoma and even parts of Texas. So that's a, a chillier air for April uh, you know, 8th time frame for a good chunk of the midsection of the country where we've got numerous 30s and even 40s along the coastline here into Washington and Oregon and widespread 60s hanging on for portions of uh, California. But as we turn our attention to the East Coast on Friday morning, you can see the widespread 20s and even 30s for much of the Ohio Valley into the Northeast. So yes, that's why we can't roll out some just wet snowflakes in this part of the country because temperatures are gonna be in the 30s and yeah, it's, it, you could get some wet snowflakes when the temperature is below 40 degrees, uh, but it's not gonna amount to much. And obviously it's gonna melt on contact as soon as it hits the ground. Uh, but as we transition into Saturday, that snow into portions of the, the Pacific Northwest just extends into portions of Idaho into Montana with some snow breaking out for them behind a cold front that's gonna be entering much colder conditions and the development of a, a massive trough that's going to be really taking taking shape as we get into early next week but this system out here off the off the east coast is start, going to be starting to wind down as that cold front will continue to shift further off the east coast but we're still going to, have to be dealing with some rain showers even as we get into your saturday time frame along the i-95 corridor along the east coast here as this system will kind of wind itself down as well as the cold air can say bye-bye for the for the northeast as well so you can actually see this on the height anomalies as we got that last kind of hurrah for the nat for the northeast as things are going to be rapidly changes with this ridge really starting to build in and this will rapidly start to build in as we get into early next week with a big warm up on the way and then all of our attention turns out west as we get into sunday afternoon with this developing trough and you can actually see the 540 line here that's typically your freezing line and where it could actually be snowing in that part of the country just north of the 540 line so that drags down the colder air all the way down into portions wyoming as we get into your sunday time frame but we do have a developing short wave out ahead of it out here off in the pacific that could kick off some rain showers and some of the stronger storms into portions of Missouri and to Arkansas as we get into the day on your Sunday time frame. But as we transition into Monday, April the 11th, you can see the ridge really starting to deepen now over the portions of the Ohio Valley into the Northeast. The darker the orange is, the higher the temperature and the, the most uh, well above average temperature anomaly it can be. So this starts to really rapidly change with a good swing of 10, 15 to 20 degrees difference in temperatures from the day before as that trough really starts to dig in out here off the West Coast. And then we got that developing short wave starting to intensify out there at the Pacific. That's gonna create a lift. It's gonna tap into some of that warm sector off the Southern Plains. And that is gonna be, gonna be the beginning stages of our severe threat that's going to be starting on monday as the active dry line really starts to take shape as we get into the afternoon hours that could keep be kicking off some storms and some of those could be on the severe side as we get into the late afternoon into the evening hours again into portions of waco much of the dallas worth area into wichita falls into oklahoma city into tulsa all the way up into uh, wichita kansas so definitely be on high alert as we get into say probably after a four o'clock time frame going into the late evening hours and this part highlighted in yellow on monday afternoon so you can take a look at the water vapor imagery by then as that southwest wind will really start to kick in drawing and bringing in that gulf moisture picking off those showers and storms while we have that developing trough out west 
will push some of those uh, you know rain showers back into northern California and along the coast here and then snow in the Intermountain West you can see that on the overall surface map as we get into your Monday afternoon time frame there's the short wave developing kicking off off the dry line in the midsection of the country out here at the west we've got those tightening isobars bringing in those rain showers off the coastal areas but then all that transfers to snow into the intermountain west where it is going to be cold enough and it's been dragging down that 540 line in its wake dragging down those colder temperatures and i think this actually just deepens and amplifies as we get deeper into next week so as we transition into tuesday you can see the dip you can see the, really the dip the darker purples start to indicate that's an indication of some much colder conditions transferring down from the upper regions to the surface and that 540 line drags it all the way down into parts of northern uh arizona here so you can definitely say it, tell, tell this is the much colder weather for you know middle of april standards while while much of the central u.s and parts of the ohio valley the southeast and much of the east coast here and the northeast are rapidly much warmer conditions in fact much of the northeast will be starting to experience some temperatures in the 80s <laughs> yes i said approaching 80 degrees by the time we get into tuesday and this part of the country but out ahead of it we still have that short wave and that's going to be kicking off another dry line setup in a lot of the same areas that you saw on monday so we got a, yet another chance for severe weather going into your tuesday afternoon tuesday early evening in a time frame back into waco this time it pushes a little bit further east into lufkin into shreveport into little rock arkansas back into springfield missouri back into Wichita again, going into Oklahoma City, into Tulsa, back into the Dallas-Worth area and parts of Wichita Falls. So definitely, again, another active day for severe weather, but it doesn't really start until about after the four o'clock timeframe as that dry line gets active out here in uh, West Texas. But as we transition to Wednesday, there's the colder temperatures continue to deepen, continue to amplify. The ridge out wet, out east continues to amplify, continues to deepen. We're getting those much warmer temperature anomalies, creating that big warm up that's on the way for the northeast. But out ahead of it, again, you still are in the warm sector. You look, you're literally still in the warm sector. Here's the as you wake up on Wednesday morning. Uh, April the 13th here's low temperature guys so we got all the colder air out west right we got widespread all these reds are widespread 20s those are all 20s and the purples are teens even some single digits into parts of of Idaho into Montana but you can see where the warm sector is where you're where you're still in the warm sector you're still susceptible to seeing that severe weather so we're talking 72 degrees for a low temperature in Dallas that's warm right i mean those temperatures of the 60s all extend all the way into iowa by then so by wednesday i do feel this spread of severe weather is going to be starting to expand as the cold front will continue to shift uh and, and tap into some of those uh, short waves and that's going to be creating even a much bigger uh threat for severe weather as we get into your wednesday time frame but again, it could be a lot of the same areas uh, that we saw for Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday. So you could be looking at three days in a row for severe weather in parts of the Dallas Fort Worth area, Lufkin, Shreveport, going, going into Little Rock by, by uh, Wednesday afternoon, uh, Springfield. And I think by then it'll get, even get into parts of Iowa. Yes, even parts probably into parts of uh, Illinois, as this thing will probably even be much further expanded uh, by then, of course, this is six days out from when I were you know, creating this video. But yes, it does look to be a very active week next week. But underneath that, it's got some much colder temperatures, guys. Yes, this is the middle of April and it can snow still in April. And it's going to come back for parts of the country with some much colder conditions. And look at those tightening arse of ours as we get into Wednesday and parts of the Dakotas here, even in Nebraska with that 981 low pressure. That's some cold stuff dragging down that colder air. And there's the comma Q shape extending all the way down into the coastline. So yes, there's your Wednesday setup along the dry line. And all this could be 
very active in the parts of the southern plains and getting into parts of the southeast with heavy snow starting to break out by then with those tightening isobars with those winds really starting to crank and man it's hard to say you're going to have a blizzard type conditions even you know seven days out but yeah there's a lot of indications there could be some very heavy snow and a lot of wind at the same time in fact look at the vorticity index on this massive swirl that's going to be over the midsection and the upper midwest and then down below it you've got all that instability with these short waves and diving down in the comma q shape and that's going to bring that severe threat shifting all the way into parts of the southeast extending into your southeast getting into parts of the ohio valley by then and you can't roll out ohio even into parts of pennsylvania probably by then as that cold front will be tapping into the warm sector creating that uh, instability and you could be kicking off some of those storms and some of those could be on the severe side well obviously we'll fine-tune that as it gets closer but underneath that man you got some high winds guys so on top of the heavy snow we've got winds cranking upwards to 40 50 even upwards to 60 miles an hour so you only need about 35 mile per hour wind gusts for you know uh, winds for for three hours or, or longer to create even like some blizzard like conditions so yes, I can't roll out. There could be even some blizzard warnings by the time we get into say that Thursday time frame for next week and parts of the Dakotas here. So yeah, that definitely can't be uh, ruled out because there'll definitely be some heavy snow uh, in its wake with on the northwest side of that 981 uh, low pressure system. But as it continues to expand and go into that Friday time frame. We've got more rain uh, entering back into the parts of the southeast as that low pressure center will start to <laughs> try to wind itself down and lift a little bit further north uh, by then as we get into Friday. So all the snow uh, starts to lift into the Dakotas, into upper portions of Minnesota by then, and southern uh, Canada uh, by the time we get into uh, a, a next Friday. But underneath that, I mean, here's the model blend. This is a combination of all the global models and uh, everything else. So, I mean, this, this is the model blend even a week out. And it's got some pretty significant snow. It's a good swath of a foot, a foot of snow in the Intermountain West into portions of, uh, of Wyoming and to Montana. I mean, a lot of these areas are well below average uh, snowfall, uh, you know, for this for the season and so you're going to be adding to those totals so we got some pretty heavy snow coming back especially into southern parts of montana here and parts of uh, wyoming and then those heavier snows extend to the dakotas and all these areas in pink that's easily 10 to 10 to 12 inches and some of these areas could even pick up more than that into portions of the dakotas it extends into minnesota as well as into southern parts of uh, canada here but the overall setup for the severe threat, so you can see with the combination of all the heavier snows that are gonna be taking place uh, just north of that surface low and then down south in the warm sector, we've got multiple days of severe weather. We got today along the East Coast on, on Thursday today, along into Florida and the East Coast, it kind of settles down for several days, but it does come back with that active short wave setting up a, some stronger storms up, up here and then as we transition into that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, going into Thursday timeframes, you can see it's pretty widespread with widespread severe weather possible. And then also with that heavier snows into the north. So this could be uh, looking at some of your most significant widespread impacts for much of the country uh, for next week. So I will continue uh, to fine tune this as we get closer into next week i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video and definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel catch the latest update where i protect you before and after storm